Hey, in this video, I'm going to be explaining the genetic link between Hashimoto's hypothyroidism and anxiety and major depressive disorder. And I'll give you a hint, it has nothing to do with your TSH levels or your free T4 levels. So let me give you a little background. It's been known for a long time that both hypo and hyperthyroidism have been associated with risk of bipolar disorder, depression, and anxiety. We also have known that just kind of, you know, small variations in thyroid hormone levels are associated with those conditions. But the most common cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune problem. So what some researchers uh, set out to do, and this was published earlier this year, and I'll, I'll put the link down here, they wanted to find out well, what actually is the connection between thyroid dysfunction and these disorders. So what they did is they did what's called a, a genotypic analysis and a phenotype analysis. And they did something called a genome-wide uh, association study. And they looked at hundreds of thousands of people uh, with both thyroid problems as well as anxiety and depression. And the connection is this. You know, we already know Hashimoto's is an autoimmune problem, so clearly the immune system's involved in that. Well, what we also have known over the last 10 or 15 years with some more bitter research is that the immune system is for sure involved in a huge chunk of anxiety and depression and other psychiatric cases. And so one thing you have to understand is how the thyroid hormones, you know, how can they affect the brain? Well, obviously if you're hypothyroid, right, like if you're actually quantitatively low, uh, that can have a direct effect on brain function. That's very well known. But there could be a better, a more different explanation for that. And the connection is just autoimmunity in general. And so there are some different mechanisms that we know are at play. There's a, there's something called cross-reaction, which I'll come back around to in a minute. And cross-reaction occurs when the antibodies for one thing can stick on to another thing. So in Hashimoto's, you know, antibodies are like little post-it notes. In Hashimoto's, you've got thyroid peroxidase antibodies or thyroglobulin antibodies, and it's known that thyroid peroxidase antibodies can actually attach to things in your brain called astrocytes, as well as some things in your cerebellum. So that may be a connection. Uh, there can also be some other uh, cross-reaction between uh, uh, thyroid peroxidase antibodies and other brain antibodies. So anyway, when they did this study, what they found out is that there's definitely a strong connection between, a genetic connection between Hashimoto's hypothyroidism anxiety and depression. But the connection has nothing to do with your TSH level or your free T4 level, which I think is really, really a landmark thing to be saying. Because, you know, for 20 years, uh, I've been saying, you probably see me say on YouTube, that there's basically, you know, two kinds of thyroid problems. There's a quantity problem, and then there's a usage problem. And that's basically what this study is saying. In fact, they go on to quote that you know, a lot of people with uh, hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's will have kind of milder forms of depression and anxiety, but that depression and anxiety for about, they say, 10 to 15% of people remains even if their TSH and free T4 look okay, right? And that is the classic Hashimoto story, right? It takes seven or 10 years to finally get diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Then once you get the medication, sometimes you don't feel better. I mean, I see 30 patients a month uh, new patients a month who have Hashimoto's that are taking thyroid medication and they don't feel better. And the vast majority of people I see with Hashimoto's have depression or anxiety or some kind of form of that. And what is so cool about this study is it's saying, look, we need to be looking at the immune system for both of these sets of conditions, right? It's not the thyroid hormones that are the connection between Hashimoto's and uh, uh, anxiety and depression. The connection is the autoimmunity, the immune system. And just to kind of, you know, I guess to toot my own horn, that's probably why we've gotten such great results over the last 20 years, is looking at the immune system of the Hashimoto's patient and the immune system of the patient with depression and anxiety. One of the things that they point out uh, in the paper is that anytime someone you know has depression or anxiety, one of the first things that gets checked is their thyroid levels, right? But then if their thyroid levels aren't low, nothing happens. How that could be better is every person that's got depression or anxiety should have their immune system looked at. They should see if they have thyroid antibodies. They should see if they have autoimmunity in general. But I gotta tell you, that's probably not gonna happen. Uh, I know that the way a lot of psychiatrists work, a lot of endocrinologists work, they don't have time to do that, right? If it's not outside the lab range, well then we don't have anything to do about it. But what this study is saying is, it's not the levels of the hormone. It's the immune system dysfunction. So. You need to be working with someone that understands this, and there's probably not that many who do, to be honest. But one of the things that, that you can do, I mean, as a practitioner, as a clinician, is we can do what's called an immunophenotype test. We can actually look and see what is your immune system doing? What's your immune system fingerprint? Whether your TSH or 
T4 is abnormal or not. What we can do is we can do what's called multiple tissue antibody testing and do correct testing for different antibodies to find out, do you have an autoimmune problem that hasn't been treated or an autoimmune problem that no one's picked up? I find it very exciting because I think the whole area of depression, anxiety, and psychiatric disorders has been incredibly underserved. And I don't want to say wrongly served, but there's so much help that can be done. I mean, I've seen it in my own practice over 20 years. Um, so I read this paper, and again, I'm putting the, the, the uh, citation down here for you guys. Uh, I'm just excited by it because I'm like, thank God someone had the time and the energy to do the research and say, look, here's the link. The genetic link between Hashimoto's and depression and anxiety is the immune system. It's autoimmunity in general. Uh, it's not the TSH and the free T4 levels. So if you have depression, you have anxiety, uh, yeah, get your thyroid levels checked. But just because they're normal doesn't mean it's not your thyroid. Right? It could be Hashimoto's or it could be your immune system. So you got to work with someone that is staying up to date and is current uh, and really can look at your immune system and look at you overall and not just be worried about, hey, is your TSH or your free T4 normal? Because if it's normal, we can't do anything, right? So I'm excited today, and I, I hope you guys get excited by this news as well, because what it means is, is that there is, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's hope, there's always hope, but when you find a practitioner and find a doctor who knows this and knows what to do, it can really change things. So uh, I'm excited to share it with you. I'll see you guys next time.